Hello there. We are at Grove Water Farm here in Southwest Florida and behind me are our Florida Cracker Sheep. And these sheep are sometimes referred to as the Florida Scrub Sheep or the Florida Native Sheep. However, Florida Cracker is their true name. And this is a very interesting breed with an interesting breed history. They are probably in the running for some of the oldest sheep in America because their ancestors would have been the churro sheep from Spain that came over with the original population. So the churro wasn't a very highly valued sheep in Spain. They raised, they raised two breeds. They raised, they raised the Merino, which has a very fine wool and fueled their wool trade and fueled the Spanish crown. And then they raised the churro, which they kept in the marshlands. Um, they used those mostly for meat, not for meat and wool. And so when the original conquistadors came over to the United States, specifically to South Florida where we are now, they probably brought mostly churro sheep and perhaps a few merino sheep. However, they were quickly attacked by the Calusa Indians, a lot of their livestock scattered, and that's where the story of this breed begins. So these sheep ended up living in feral groups here in Southwest Florida where we have alligators and we have mosquitoes, we have pests of every kind. And so they basically roamed by themselves through the swamps of Florida. And through doing so, they developed a lot of hardiness, a lot of parasite resistance. And it's raining right now and it's marshy, it's wet, it's August, it's the hottest month of the year. And this is the kind of environment they can still thrive in because of their breed history. Um, the old Florida Cracker Cowboys used to round them up about once a year. They would go up and try and gather them together. Uh, and other than that, they existed independently in the wetlands here in Florida. So we are raising them for both meat and wool. And we're really looking forward. We recently had the shearer come. I guess it wasn't too recent now, it was a few months ago. And we're looking forward to our first batch of wool coming back so that I can spin it and we can sell it through our shop. Um, but in general, they're just a wonderful breed. They're very docile. Uh, they smell wonderful. They make our property smell wonderful. They fertilize the ground. Um, they kind of live, exist symbiotically with our chickens, which is great. And because they have such a interesting breed history, a variety of colors are produced through this breed. So you can have a lamb, you could have a red lamb, you could have a chocolate lamb. And that's been really fun for us and for our kids. spinning on my new wheel. This is a Schacht Reeves Saxony wheel and Saxony means that this part of the wheel is um, to the side kind of like a fairy tale wheel. This is the kind of wheel I've always wanted to have. I just got it and I haven't spun in three years so I'm kind of having to relearn how to spin. It is a little bit like riding a bike so it's coming back. Um, and I used to have a castle wheel which is a different type of wheel. It's where the wheel is directly in front of you. Um, it's a modern wheel but I figured if I was gonna get a new one, I should get the one I really wanted, which is this more traditional Saxony wheel. And some people do use these ones for reenactments, which is kind of cool. It'd be fun to dress up and do that. So I'm not spinning our fiber. I'm spinning a blend of uh, Merino, which is a wool sheep, and bamboo. Our fiber will arrive in September, and I'm so excited to spin it. So remove the drive wheel to get it going. And then you just kind of inch it forward and you see I have to join that spot right there. There we go. And this wool has been hand dyed. It obviously didn't come off the sheep with this pretty color. And one thing I wanted to talk about is why wool is important because now obviously we have um, synthetic fibers. If you go and you buy a sweater at the store, it's typically made out of a man-made synthetic fiber of some kind and that's very efficient. Um, and as a result, that's, that's one reason that people aren't really raising sheep as often. The other reason is that Americans just don't eat meat, uh, mutton and lamb, sheep meat, as much as they eat beef. And um, I'm actually not really sure why that is, because lamb and mutton are delicious. Um, I think maybe somebody started a rumor at one point that it wasn't very good, and maybe we just need to start a new rumor that it's delicious, because it's really great. Um, but anyway, people now use more synthetic fibers, knitting, is, uh, knitting and spinning are very slow, and things that are slow 
aren't always considered as valuable in our culture, which is so focused on productivity and efficiency. One of the reasons I wanted to get a wheel is that obviously due to coronavirus, there's a lot less going on in the world. There's less fun things to go to currently. So I figured this would be a good time to pick up spinning again. And it is slow and it is meditative and that's one of the reasons I enjoy it so much. Also, um, especially wool that is sort of fresh off the sheep, like ours will be when it comes back. It has a really nice smell, it has a nice texture. So overall, it's a really soothing art form. Um, and it's historical, so it has historical rel relevance. It's um, an important part of heritage, both in the breeds themselves, the breeds that are raised for wool, and in our heritage as human beings who have been spinning, you know, for centuries now. The wheel evolved from what was originally just thigh spinning. People would spin wool on their thigh, and then eventually they invented what's called the drop spindle. And from the drop spindle, they invented the great wheel, which did not have pedals. And then this is the most modern design on a spinning wheel. And I don't remember exactly when the pedals and the flyer, which is this situation, were introduced, but um, it made hand spinning a whole lot faster. So the reason I'm inchworming the fiber like this is that this is from a merino sheep. A merino has a short staple length, which just means the length of the wool itself. And since it's so short, I have to kind of inch forward so that I don't lose the next piece of fiber coming out. I think that people or farmers in America raise fewer and fewer sheep is because there is cost and labor involved in shearing. Um, and why raise a sheep when you can raise cattle? They don't need to be shorn. And there's less and less demand for products that are made of wool. So not everybody has to knit or spin, but at least maybe when you are selecting a Christmas sweater, you can try to select something that is predominantly made of wool. Or, you know, even better is to buy yarn and wool from uh, small farms like ours. And that way you are supporting something that's not even a meat product. It's something that the animal can continue to give. And um, if those products are being sold and that's a successful venture for the farmer, they can continue doing that. They can continue keeping the sheep year after year as a fiber animal. Um, but it does involve wearing wool. It doesn't involve knitting. You don't have to knit and spin your own, although that's fun. And this, these are dark times. And so it's a good time to take up strange hobbies. Yeah, that. <laughs>